This is Dave from discoverdigitalphotography.com. This is just a quick video to show you how to do selective colour in Photoshop Elements and also the full version of Photoshop. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is I've got my image here. And let's just click on the Layers tab. And you can see there's the background layer there. And what we want to do to remove all the colour we want to create a hue saturation layer and then pull the saturation all the way down to zero and as you can see that creates a black and white image and then we want to use the layer mask here of the hue saturation layer and we want to remove the effect from the part that you want to be in colour which in my case is these locks so I'm going to first, there's quite a few different ways that you can create a mask to show just one part of the image in colour. First of all I'll show you using the brush. So I'm on the brush and I'm in black. On a layer mask black always hides and white reveals. So you can see it's white already so it's revealing the effect of black and white. So I'm going to paint black on it to hide the effect. And there you can see it just lets the red of the locks go through and I'm probably going to want to change the brush slightly Oops. to a harder brush. Let's just get the size up of that. I'm just hitting the bracket key on the keyboard there to change the size of the brush and then just paint along the edge and just painting on the mask to reveal the red colour of the locks This doesn't seem to have worked over here. Right, I think that's it. So that's just showing you how to do it using the paintbrush. Um, there's, as I said, there's quite a lot of different ways you can use to create the mask. So let's just um, zoom out, just pressing Control and Zero on the keyboard there, and you can see that's what the image looks like. So you can see just the locks are in colour, while the rest of the image is black and white. It's a good way to focus the viewer's attention on the part that's in colour. So I'm just going to delete that, and we'll start again. Q saturation adjustment layer. Bring the saturation down to zero to make it black and white. And then click on the layer thumbnail again. And this time, let's try using the um, magic wand tool. So I'm going to hide the layer, because this is going to be easier if we have the colour information. I'm going to click on the lock. And um, with the magic wand, what it does is it selects everything that is a similar colour. And... Um, you don't want contiguous ticked. I'll just, um, if I unselect that, I'll just show you what it's like with contiguous ticked. Actually, it's um, not a lot of difference, but. So I'm just going to select these areas. And that looks okay. And then I'm going to delete the layer mask here. Um, to select more than one area with a magic wand, you click once, and then you hold down the shift key and click again to select the extra areas. So just click there and there. In there, maybe. No, that's um, just going to press Ctrl and Z there because that's selected too much. Um, and now I'm just going to apply the layer mask, so I'm clicking on the Add Layer Mask button down here with the Hue Saturation Mask selected. Um, 
as you can see, I probably should have alt clicked on that, but never mind. As you can see at the moment, if I switch that on, the effect is just applying to the locks when we want it the other way around. So I'm going to press Ctrl and I, and that inverts the effect, or inverts the layer mask. Um, because I wasn't selected on contiguous, it's selected a bit down here. I'm just going to click on the brush, and pressing X, switch to white, paint that bit in. So that's um, using the magic wand tool there to create the selection. Let's just remove that hue saturation layer again and create another one. Put the saturation down to zero to make it black and white. Um, and this time let's try using the magnetic lasso tool. So with this, zoom in quite well, click once and then just pull the mouse down along the side of the object that you want to select. So this wouldn't work well for things like fur and hair but it does work well with objects that have got a solid edge. And as you can see I'm just pulling the mouse along the side of the lock and Photoshop is automatically adding points to those little squares and I can also left click to add points manually. So I'm just doing that where it joins up. There we go. Go up here. Actually, it's just just pressing the delete key there to remove those last two points, so I want to keep a bit of the rust colour in there. And for moving um, the picture like this, I'm just holding down the space bar and um, clicking and dragging with the mouse, and that lets you move. So I'm still just moving the mouse along the side and Photoshop is adding these, most of these points automatically and I'm just clicking when I want to manually add a point. And there I just clicked back onto the first point and now it's created a selection. So if we zoom out, um, let's put that mask back on. And now what we can do is delete the layer mask and if I alt click on the layer mask icon you can see it creates the mask and um, the part that was selected has been masked out while the rest is showing the effect. So we've got the locks in colour nicely while the rest of the image is in black and white. So that's using the magnetic masseau tool. And the last one that I'll show you in Photoshop Elements. Let's just remove that again. Right, for this one um, you need to first duplicate the background layer. So you can click the layer, drag it down to new, or you can go to um, layer, duplicate layer, or just press Ctrl and J on the keyboard. And then I'm going to go up to image and magic extractor. And then it's going to zoom in. And then you can see up here we've got some pens, a plus pen and a minus pen. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in the locks and paint out the rest of the image. So I'm just painting with the keep pen here. I'm going to select the remove pen and just paint around the outside of them. Let's zoom in a bit tighter. And again, just holding space on the keyboard and click and dragging with the mouse when I want to move across the image here, like that. Right, let's go back to the keep pen. And just using the bracket 
buttons on the keyboard to change the size. It's going to go around here. Okay, so that looks like that's all right. Let's just press Control and Zero to zoom out. And I'm going to click on the preview button to preview the effect. And this will probably take a minute or so. Just while it computes what you want to keep and what you want to remove. So using this um, magic extractor, it works well for things with hard edges like this. But also it would um, work better than some of the other selection tools for things like fur and um, hair and that sort of thing, things with soft edges would be, um, if you have something like that, this would be quite a good tool to use. So I'm just having a look at this, holding down the space bar again and clicking and dragging with the mouse to move and that looks like it's got quite a good selection there so I think I'm going to click OK on that. If it wasn't OK you can use the brushes to touch up the selection. Um, you can use the um, eraser brush to, if you make a mistake to remove any of this. But that looks OK to me, so I'm just going to click OK. There we go, and you can see on this layer now we've got just the locks selected. So I'm going to control and click on the layer like that and that select makes a selection based on the layer and now I'm going to go up to hue saturation and put the saturation down to minus 100 and you can see again it's at the moment the select the um, hue saturation layer is applying only to the locks which is the opposite of what we want so with the mask selected I'm just going to press Control and I to invert the effect and there we've got the nice image with just the locks in colour and the rest in black and white. And I'm going to show you in the full version of Photoshop now. Um, this has much many similar tools. Um, so like we've got the magnetic lasso tool is over there. And um, there's the magic wand tool and that sort of thing as well. But I'm going to show you in here selecting by um, colour. If we go up to selection and color range, and this is pretty pretty similar to the magic wand really, and all we do is we click once on the color that we want to keep, and you can see in here a preview of what is being selected. Hold down the shift button and click again to add more areas to our selection. So I'm just shift clicking around here. And I think that looks like quite a good selection really. And um, this fuzziness controls how much is being selected. So that looks okay to me. And the range is how near it has to be. To where you click, so you can see if the range is quite high, it's picking up this um, red sort of car down here because that's a similar colour to the lock. But if I reduce the range down, then it's only picking up the colours that are near where I've been clicking, which is the two locks. So that looks like quite a good selection to me. So I'm going to click OK on that. And again, it will just take a while to make the selection. And then I'm going to go to Hue Saturation, put Saturation down again, and then again, the selection is the opposite of what I want. So I'm just going to press Control and I to invert it. And there we've got the um, a similar image. Um, the only other thing I might want to do is to brighten these locks a bit. Um, so I'm going to go down to the adjustment layers. Um, in the full version of Photoshop you get quite a few different ones. So I'll just um, show this in um, Photoshop Elements. We can remove that and let's just go up here 
and we're going to make a levels adjustment. Pull the black point in, pull that down. And at the moment, I'm not really worried about what's happening to the rest of the image. Just going to control click. So, what I did there was I control clicked on the hue saturation mask and then clicked on the levels mask and then I've pressed control and backspace to fill with my background color which is black and I'm just going to press control and D to deselect and you can see what that's done is it's applied a mask to this levels adjustment that's um, white where the locks are and is black for the rest so I've just used the same mask that I used for that but with the hue saturation adjustment where we applied it to everything apart from the locks with the levels I've done the opposite and it's only applied to the locks so that's made them a bit brighter and a bit more contrasty than they were before so they stand out even more and I think that's it really so if you want any more tips or to see the text version of this tutorial just visit discoverdigitalphotography.com thanks <laughs>